we're back live at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Uh, thank you for uh, waiting it out here. Had some technical difficulties. Should have a fixed here as we're uh, looking at side by side by side by side action. Uh, currently, uh, leader was the 88. He's hanging on the outside. Uh, that's Michael Duell. And then the 07 of uh, Andrew Fanish III on the inside behind them. Uh, a lot of cars, though. Yeah, I was going to say it there, Dakota. It's, uh, it's almost like you guys never left because uh, when we left you, uh, before we started to try to fix things out, we had the 07 and the 88 side by side, and that has the way, <laughs> in the way it's been since since uh, we went off the air temporarily there. And these guys have been fighting lap after lap after lap. And uh, the 07 looks like he's got a little bit of an advantage. The 88 is going to get a little momentum. And uh, it looks like he's going to try to slide in behind there. And I uh, want to give a shout out to that 8 truck with uh, Anthony Ankello uh, in that. That bright red eight, uh, eight truck there, he has uh, had a whale of a race. He's racing up towards the front here with these guys. You know, seven uh, takes the lead, and he slides in behind him. Eight cars, you were just talking about, shooting in the outside lane. He's working the outside of the 36 machine. And how about Jeff Archer just behind him in the 31? Ryan Manning up there. Matthew Bright has moved back up a few positions and does appear. And we're back side by side for the lead again. It's the 88 has shoved it down to the inside. 07 of Andrew Bayes, the third to the outside. He's hanging in strong and uh, looks like he does not want to give up the lead. Slides a little off the corner, but he's all right. 36 might look three wide to the bottom. Big better of it. It's in yeah, I can't imagine the 36 truck's going to make that move. I know Jacob uh, pretty good, and I don't think he's going to make that move uh, when it's not going to stick at all. Ryan Manning has now come down to the attention of his crew. He comes down pit road uh, on lap 58. This could be scheduled. I don't think he's pitted yet, so it could be that time uh, to come down, fill up the fuel tank, get four tires. Uh, these other guys won't have to quite do that. Uh, for another few laps, I mean, at least 20 laps, because remember they did pit, uh, and Manning does not, has not yet, uh, that I know of. No, my uh, my board showing that he has not uh, been down pit road either uh, yet at this point in time yet. So uh, so he's going to get down there, and that's going to throw him off sequence. But uh, if we continue to go green there, then uh, I don't think it'll probably hurt him that much. But he does lose a lap here. He will lose a lap for sure. Uh, and that'll score him in at least 19th or worse. Uh, I think it could go back to 21st. Uh, the 21st place car will be the last car one lap down. Then you have the rest of the field sitting two laps down. So if he loses more than one lap here, he could be a little bit trouble. As he's now coming, uh, getting passed by, it doesn't appear to be the 54. Yeah, another thing to note here there, Dakota, is the fact that, I mean, we started this uh, race with 24 trucks, and all 24 trucks are still running, and we're just about at the halfway point here, and that's, uh, that's that says something right there for the racing, is that all these guys have been able to uh, to keep it clean enough to keep these trucks on the uh, track, with the, uh, the only uh, two laps down being the worst uh, the worst truck of the bunch, so that's uh, some really good racing by these guys. And it is up front. Things have uh, changed. The 07 has got a little bit of a gap. That gap is closing 88 was the leader moved to second place i mean he's going back and forth he's on the outside falling back fast the 13 of matthew wright has now been around him. here comes the 74 31 and the eight as well uh, will be not too far behind these guys yeah and uh, the 88 has been uh, you know dominating a lot of this race but once he uh, lost that lead to the 07 truck and got uh, stuck on that outside lane looks like he's just gonna keep falling back and back and back in the uh, you know, he'll probably end up falling in behind that 8 truck, I'd imagine, unless he can find a gap between the 31 and the 8 there uh, as they uh, they head back to the front. And it looks like the 36 has uh, finally caught the 07 as uh, the 88 jumps the line behind the 31. Nat's going to pull over the crossover. He looks to the inside. Going to go back side by side with the 31-88 for just about fifth position as uh, 88 shooting back down. He's going to get to the very bottom get right next to the apron line he gets it but he does not get turned sideways we saw a lot of guys get down there get the apron line get turned sideways uh, he's hanging on strong on the inside still side by side with the 31 he has the position across the start finish line and in, in the turn number one and two he has the preferred lane and it looks like he is going to take over the spot and clear the 31 yeah and the 31 will probably just tuck right in there yeah there he goes oh looks like the 31 actually made a little bit of contact with that wall there so he's going to lose some momentum and the eight trucks right on his bumper because of that but uh, he manages to just hold off and not make any contact there. But uh, we'll have to see the 31 uh, sustain any damage when he hit that wall there. That's not something you want to do. You get that outside wall, you knock the tail out just a little bit. You do that, you're in trouble because the car could be handling uh, anywhere from a little different to a lot of different, uh, especially at a place like this where it's so line dependent. It seems like uh, you make a little bit of a, a move uh, in the steering wheel and your car seems to jump sideways. 
uh, especially through the dog leg, that's not something you want to deal with, a knocked out toe here. No, definitely not, and as we were talking there, it looked like the 36 truck got on the inside of the 07 for the lead there, and he's uh, he's got the preferred line on the inside as they head towards the start-finish line. We'll leave that lap with the 13 truck uh, tucking in behind him and trying to make the move as well in the second position. Yeah, the 30, uh, the 07 shot way up the track, the 36 pushed out the track as well, but the 36 was able to carry a lot of momentum off the corner, plus having the preferred lane, was able to take the spot from the 07, 07 making a run back on the outside lane, they almost make contact, they're going to be alright, 07 falls back 13 after the inside of the 07, that's Matthew Wright again coming back from, from an EOL penalty, and behind them they have more company, there's the 74, Michael Guest, who if you remember started from the pole, uh, was black flagged for connection issues, and he is now back up, uh, racing for the race lead, basically, and also Michael Duell is also stuck into this this group here. Yeah, he uh, when he lost the la uh, the uh, the lead there and fell back a little bit, he didn't fall that far back. I mean, he uh, he fell back to the clutches of the eight truck there, but uh, he's worked his way back up in the fifth position, and uh, I'm sure he'll be uh, trying out for the lead there not too much farther into the future. And the 31 truck behind him is still sticking with those these guys there back in the sixth position, so it doesn't look like he's got too much damage to that truck at all. Battle for the lead, Matthew Wright to the inside, and the 13 machine led a lot last time by 36 of Jacob 5 to the outside lane, he's hanging his strong 74, almost makes it out with the 07, they're alright, battle for second, or third position, and then Michael Duell is following the 74 to the inside, 07 still on the outside, kind of stuck up there, 31 also following the 88, so big battle up front, as the 13 and uh, 36 lead the field. Yeah, this is amazing racing here, Dakota, I mean, these guys... You know, we mentioned how it's hard to get away from, me, uh, you know, the other trucks with the drafting here, but these guys are racing consistently side by side, lap after lap after lap, and, you know, in a group of five, six, seven trucks. So, I mean, these guys are really putting on a show tonight. Well, that they are. As, uh, you see even the 31 and 8 going side by side back there. 07 now falling back to the clutches of the 88. The 36 is hanging on the outside pretty strong. 13 throws the car in deep. Uh, makes up a little bit of time on that 36. He pushed it up the track just a little bit, but he's making up uh, a decent amount of time, pretty much staying even with the 36. Now let the 36 make up a whole lot of time on that outside lane. See the 13 now going side by side still, and uh, so that 07 jumps back in line. Uh, it looks like the 13 pushed up, lost a little time. 74 all over the bumper of the 13. Uh, 13 wiggles, and it does look like the 36 will hold on and clear the 13. Yeah, it looks like the 74 is going to dive on the inside of the 13th. Uh, no, he doesn't quite have the line there, but it looks like he's got enough of a bumper that he's going to make the move there. The 07 there has now fallen back into the fifth position, which I think is about the farthest way back that we've seen him under green flag condition. So uh, it'll be interesting to watch him uh, charge his way up to the front because we know he's got the speed to do it. And Michael DeWell yeah, just went around him, so it's going to move the 88 back up one spot. 74 looking to clear the 13. He's making up a lot of time on the inside lane. 13 nearly gets the outside wall if he didn't. Uh, he's falling back pretty quickly here as here comes the 88 now looking to the inside of that 13. 13 threw it in deep into, the, uh, into turns 3 and 4, made up a lot of time on the 74. Michael Gus guessed and uh, here he, the 13 got a little sideways. Again, that is uh, Matthew Wright, the 13 goes from 2nd to 3rd that lap and here's the 88 on the inside. That is Michael Duell. He will take the position as well as the 07 looking. 13 jumps in line though before he can. Yeah, and behind these guys, I mean, everybody's pretty much straight in line uh, in these little packs and groups and uh, pretty much straight uh, uh, straight in line. So we're not really missing much uh, action there by staying with uh, with what's going on here in the front. And this is where the action is anyway. So uh, this is where we need to be watching here as the 74 is looking to maybe take a look at that lead. But uh, Jacob's not giving the line, but, oh, he does make it to the inside going into the corner there. And he's got that line. And I don't know if he'll be able to make it stick because Jacob looks like he's got some good momentum on that outside lane. 36 knows how to hold hold off on the outside lane. He's already done it once. Uh, he's got the experience up there that some other people don't have. You see that uh, the Michael Guest machine in the 74. I do believe the 74 looking to the inside. Uh, he may not have the experience working side by side, but he does. Uh, sh yeah, actually, he does. Remember, he actually was black flight and had to come to the field, but he is able to pass the 36, unlike the 13. 13, again, still back there in the fourth position. Uh, here comes the 88, now underneath the 36 of Jacob Fife. Uh, and that is uh, Michael Duell, who was, again, points leader and uh, was race leader for a long time, working back from pulling back to around fifth position. 07 of Andrew Bayash, the third goes around the 13 of Michael or, or Matthew Wright, who has uh, fallen back another position here. Yeah, I'm watching the 88 and the 36 guy, uh, truck uh, battle it out. Oh, caution on the track. Taking a look through and seeing uh, what's going on here. 
I see the 33 truck rolling through the grass with smoke coming from the back of him, so... And that's not where it started, though. It actually starts with the 26 machine of Daniel Holloway. He gets side-by-side side in turns 3 and 4, lap 74, position 8. Uh, with the 69, he has to check up a little bit after he pushes up in the 15 car. This is the 15, and Michael Stroll runs right to the back of him. Uh, that'll put the 26 around. He comes up, gets the outside wall, comes down the racetrack, collects somebody that goes spinning and flipping to the uh, infield. This, uh, the 26 didn't take, quite take the ride that he did. Uh, and the 26 is actually able to drive away, but I mean, that was a hard hit. You see him actually spin it out as soon as it gets into the grass. Yeah, that was a hard hit. He, uh, I think he dented all the corners on that truck. This brings us down pit road, and you got to remember, Ryan Manning stayed out, or he had pitted on the green. Now he's going to stay out and get the wave around if he's going to... Uh, you know, make up that lap. So, I mean, that kind of hurt him. He's going to have to run from the back of the field now. 74 leads us down pit road, though, and he's coming to the attention of his crew. He'll have the first pit stall, and he had the lead, so he's probably going to have the uh, best stop here. 31 to overshoots, but see the right side's going up on the 74 tires. Very important here at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Uh, right sides go down, so probably going to be a four-tire stop. It is a four-tire stop. Uh, again, fixed setup, so nobody can make really any changes here. 74 down on the way. First car in, first car out. Yeah, he, uh, he hit that stop uh, just perfectly there and got all four tires changed, got some local race fuel in there, and uh, he's away leading the race off pit road. How about the number seven car, Thomas Ridgeway, had an 11.04 second pit stop, one of the fastest on pit road in his seven machine. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm looking through the field here, Dakota, and I didn't see anybody trying any two-tire strategies there. But uh, And I can't imagine after a long run like that anybody would try that because tires are so important here. All right, but uh, while we're pacing here at Charlotte Motor Speedway on lap 76 of 125, coming down the closing laps, just about 50 laps to go, we're going to go ahead, step away, take a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back with more racing action uh, from the Integrity Racing League, League Racing Done Right. SimRacing.tv, the fastest show on the internet. Sim Racing news and reviews since 2007, with new shows every week. And we're back live at Charlotte Motor Speedway with the Integrity Racing League. We are now pacing. Uh, working off of, I do believe, turn number two. We are double foul, getting set for the green flag. We go green, ra green flag racing this time, Trevor. And, uh, man, we had some fantastic racing just before that caution blew. Yeah, definitely, Dakota. And uh, 
A little bit of housekeeping here again. Uh, the uh, 04 car or truck, I always want to call them cars, but they are actually trucks. Uh, of Ryan Wells had the uh, got the wave round on that caution there. Um, we talked about Ryan Manning in the 37 truck who had actually gone down and uh, had an earlier pit stop. Uh, we expected him to take the wave round, but he actually came down for service, so he is still sitting in a lap down. He's the first car lap down right now. Uh, and we had the 54 and the 44 both take wave rounds on that uh, to get back. Um, 54 to get back on the lead lap and the 44 to get one lap back. Oh, he'll be the, he'll, he, he will be the lucky dog if we uh, get an immediate caution. Pace car is off the winning set for the green flag. That field is in the hands of Michael Guest and he is away at Charlotte Motor Speedway through the dog lead. He crosses the start finish line and will lead another lap here at Charlotte as uh, the 88 got a great start already to the bumper of the 74 and the 74 not going to give him room to get underneath him but uh, 88 all over the bumper of that 74. Yeah, and Michael oh. Guest, of course, oh, wait, and looks like he's going to have a challenge for the lead right now as the 88 slides to the inside. Looked like a little bit of a, almost slide off, slid off his bumper there, but uh, he is uh, pushing forward on the inside lane to the lead, and looks like he is going to make it stick. Yeah, it almost looked like he got to the bumper and actually pushed him up up the track just a little bit so we can get underneath him. Here comes the 07 on Andrew Fayash, the third. He looks to the inside now of the 74 over Michael Guest. Uh, Michael Guest falling back, uh, looks like maybe another position here. He gets really sideways off of uh, turn number two, but uh, hangs on to it, still going there in his 74 machine. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> with that 07 on the inside, I can't imagine he's not going to be able to make this stick because he's had such a strong truck all night uh, with the 13 truck kind of tucking in behind him and probably going to make that move on the 74 as well if he can make the stick. I keep seeing these guys get the apron, getting all kinds of sideways, even without the apron, getting all kinds of sideways, especially the 13 of Matthew Wright, who is now working underneath the 8 car. That is the 8 car of Anthony and Keller. It looks like the 13 will get the spot. Here's the 31 of Andrew, uh, not Andrew, but uh, Jeff Barger looking underneath the 8. Here is, it looks like the 07 just cleared the 74. The 74 comes back underneath him. Got to pull the crossover. 74 going to have the position coming across the start finish line and uh, creeping up on the 88 pretty quickly here. Yeah, it looks like that uh, we've, we've, oh, caution's out on the field again. And that will mean the uh, pace car back out. Lucky dog will be. It looked like the 26th of Daniel Holloway, actually. But uh, if he was not involved in the caution, caution. I do believe might be out for Jim Fife is involved, I do know, but it looks like he's just going to the grass trying to miss it. Uh, so it may have happened uh, a little bit behind him here. Yeah, I'm seeing the 41 truck with a lot of smoke coming out of the back of him. So uh, he was definitely involved. 81. 64 gets loosened into the wall. 15, 15 car, that's Michael's throw. We got it right now. Uh, 15 car heading into turns three and four, lap 81, position number eight. Uh, he's coming off the corner, he gets sideways, 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 gets the nine just a little bit, uh, and then he comes back up the racetrack, collects somebody else, uh, and, and I believe it was another car that actually gets involved. Ooh, 81, hard hit. He gets uh, spun around, you see a bunch of cars go through the grass. One car gets him uh, coming to the grass, trying to miss him, and actually gets collected and smoke pours out of that machine. Uh, hard hit for him, but th this puts us under caution once again. It looks like Daniel Holloway would be the lucky dog. And so Ryan Manning going to lose that, that position once again there. Yeah, that uh, 41 truck that I had mentioned I would seen with the uh, smoke coming out of it, he was the unlucky guy who had uh, dove into the grass to try to avoid it and ended up getting right in the middle of it and made hard contact with the 15 truck on the inside grass and uh, did some serious damage <laughs> to his truck, unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately there, and... Uh, now we, uh, I do believe, are under caution, and I don't know, I'm sorry, having some technical difficulties of my own here, but uh, <laughs> trying to see if anybody stayed out, or who stayed out, who pitted. Yeah, I'm seeing the 17, the 54, the 21, the 15, all on pit road, along with the 44, the 33, and the 41 also on pit road. A lot of those trucks were involved in that, uh, that incident, and they're probably just getting damage repaired as we, uh, rather than just fresh tires. Looks like it, either, you know, cars that were towards the back or uh, cars that were in trouble from damage or something of the sort all down on pit road, though. We now work lap, I do believe, 84 of 125 at Charlotte Motor Speedway with the Integrity Racing League Sim Racing done right. 
Trevor, man, we've had a we've had a, a really eventful race. I think we've had a handful of lead changes. Uh, it's been really the 88, the 74, and the 07 from what we saw. 74 actually, if you do remember, was black flagged early on in the race, but he showed a lot of speed. Actually, started from the pole uh, and has come back to the field after receiving a wave around, uh, and he's currently sitting in the second position. Yeah, Dakota, we've had uh, 17 lead changes throughout this race, and uh, I believe it's been, this is our fourth caution that we're working here. Uh, looking back at the garage, looks like we have uh, we do have a couple of trucks that have actually been uh, retired. Uh, we have, uh, let's see, looking through the garage, we have Brian Harvey and Thomas Ridgeway have both taken their trucks to the garage, so they were back, but uh, still, this deep into a race to have this many trucks still out there and, uh, and fighting for a good position is uh, still impressive. And it looks like Jim 563 going to be eight laps down. He's the last car scored uh, currently. I have a feeling he may uh, may soon call it a day and hit the holler uh, with his truck. But uh, we think, you know, 17 lead changes is really good, especially for 85 laps. Charlotte, uh, the tracks, I mean, this has been really interesting. We've seen a lot of sliding. Uh, and, and really what I want to do right now is see if we can't get a driver on the radio. That would be uh, something good to hear. And I was wanting to get uh, the guy that had come to the field quite a bit. Uh, I was saying I was saying a Michael uh, guest, but uh, can't quite find him. So why don't we get Matthew Wright? But. Sorry about this, uh, trying to make sure everything is working here, but uh, we're trying to get Matt Wright on the radio. And we have Matthew Wright on the radio, I know we're probably about to go green flag racing. Uh, it looks like we are. But we're going to go ahead and actually, uh, I believe we're working off turn number two, so we have a little bit of time here. Matt Wright, uh, Dakota Ehrman, joined by Trevor Cameron up the broadcast booth to get a copy. Yeah, I got you guys. And you got an EOL at the start of the race. You come back to the field. You've been sliding around, uh, sliding around a lot, but you're up to fourth. Yeah, it's a little loose out here, but uh, we got it up to the front and uh, looking to try to get up to the lead here. All right, man. Uh, any strategy? I'll go for it, or are you kind of holding back here? These these three in front of you've been pretty strong here. I'm gonna pull back a little bit here, and then, uh, it's time to go. It's time to go to the front. All right. Well, thank you, Matt. We'll go ahead and let you go because you're getting set for the green flag. And that was Matthew Wright. Generally, we was trying to get some more time with him, but uh, unfortunately, uh, trying to make sure everything was working there. It does appear, though, that we are working off turn number four. Pace car dodge getting set for the green flag. 88 is away. He leaves the field sleeping. Uh, he's gone. The 07 on the inside follows. I believe the 07 and the 74 both spun the tires just a little bit at the same time. Here comes the 13 and Matt Wright. He looks at the inside of the 74 of um, uh, Mac Michael G Guest. I'll get it right eventually. <laughs> Yeah, I think the 74 was the one who uh, suffered the most on that because uh, he uh, he's fallen back all the way back to fourth position now. He's gotten back in line there right in front of the 36 truck of Jacob Fife. So uh, he's gotten things back under uh, underway here. But uh, it looks like the 36 is going to make it a little bit difficult for him as he's looking towards that inside. And the caution is back out on the field, unfortunately. And this time, Ryan Manning will be the recipient of the lucky dog. But uh, now we look for the cause of the caution here. I'm seeing the 44 truck stopped on the back stretch, uh, or in uh, turn three and four, actually. Uh, he got, looks like I'm watching this lap, 86 turns three and four lap, uh, or position 18, goes into the corner, and the 63 comes up and gets him just a little bit, puts him in the outside wall hard. He comes down the track, locks up the brakes and stops, but uh, is okay. It does look like uh, he was able to get rolling, I do believe. Yeah, I don't see any other contact with any other trucks there. It looks like it was just a little bit incidental contact sent him sideways there, like you were saying. And uh, he did get rolling back again, so 
Uh, a tough break for the 44 truck of uh, Matt uh, Bontempi. Yeah, I believe he has pulled it behind the wall. Uh, I believe to the attention of his crew in the garage area. All right, well, now how about we try to get the 13 once again for a little bit longer conversation here for just a moment. All right, well, now we just conveniently got another caution. We have a little bit more time here now. I know we tried to get a little earlier. We had some problems. We got him again. Uh, Matthew Wright, 13 car. Now up to the third position. He did, we were just talking to him from fourth. He stepped to third around the 74. Matthew, man, uh, I thought you was waiting. <laughs> Oh, it is waiting, you know, just uh, taking my time. We had a hole there, so we took it down low and uh, just riding around right now. I mean, now, well, what's the key to passing? I know you had to do a lot of it here, uh, and there's some guys that kind of struggle, especially when it gets, comes to what, cars hanging strong on the outside lane? Yeah, the, the drafts feel strong, so you gotta, you gotta pick and choose when you want to try to make your move, set it up good, and uh, try to get it to stick well. And Matthew, man, with, with these things sliding around as much as they are, how hard is it to hold on to these things, especially when working side by side here? It's pretty hard. The bottom lane is uh, definitely a lot looser than the top. Uh, if you can get up top and get it to stick there, you can make the passes pretty easily. But uh, I'd say the top side is definitely where you want to be at the end here. And when, when you're going to, to make a pass, how many laps do you wait, uh, especially if you're going for the win? How, how long do you wait and where do you do it? That's the question right there. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be hard to tell until you're actually in the situation. But uh, I think in the last last two laps, you definitely want to be up in the top three spots, looking for the lead there. I was gonna say there, Dakota. That sounds a lot like uh, yeah. Well, I think that's a little bit of privileged information, and I'm gonna keep my uh, cards a little bit close to the vest here on this one. <laughs> there you go. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and let uh, Matt get back to his uh, team radio and get set for uh, some more racing. And how about, uh, I want to talk to you about the VRC Mark II Virtual Racing Seat, a simulation racing cockpit designed by championship race car driver Bob Earl. Who better than a real race car driver to, to design a simulation racing cockpit? After all, he knows what it means to be comfortable in the cockpit. The design features a fully adjustable seat and frame. Additional monitor stand and shifter mount sold separately. Proud sponsors of the 2013 RSR Full Throttle Cup Series, a high quality and affordable virtual racing cockpit priced at just $349 plus shipping. See it at BobEarlRacing.com. Order one today. And also want to talk to you really quickly uh, while we have time about HDRN, the HD Video Network. Uh, hold it up here. <laughs> Got it. Uh, home of the ETV Live Radio, the HD Radio Network gives you a variety of stations to choose from, including 80s, big 80s metal, all HDR classics, all HDR country, and more. Take your pick and rock your brains out, dude. HD Radio Network uh, stations are featured on iTunes Radio, TuneIn Radio. Uh, also listen to the Windows Media Guide. Listen today from HDRadioNetwork.com or take it with you. Get the mobile app from TuneIn.com. Yeah, Dakota, and uh, also on that HD Radio Network, they're uh, starting to get a nice collection of uh, radio-focused, uh, radio, uh, live radio shows uh, as well on that, and uh, so uh, tune in for those. Um, I know uh, the only one I can think of off the top of my head that I know the timing of is uh, is on Mondays at, uh, oh, I don't know, let's see, that would be about uh, 8, no, geez, I, I got it myself all messed up, it's my own radio show, the iRacing Today. <laughs> Racing Today radio show, which uh, shows off at uh, 8.30 Eastern time on Mondays with replays at 5 o'clock on Wednesdays and Fridays. And speaking of your radio show, it's the iRacing Today radio show hosted by Trevor Cameron and Chad Dalton by the fans for the fans. This is an unabridged, unbiased, and completely off-the-cut live radio show about everything iRacing up close, not personal, live comments, no rules, no backtalk, and no BS. iRacing Today radio show, Mondays at 8.30 p.m. on ETV Live Radio, etv-eplay.net, also featured on iTunes, TuneIn, or, uh, Windows Media Guide, and TuneIn Radio. Get the mobile app from TuneIn.com. Wow, that sounds so much more professional coming in, uh, from a plug sheet as, uh, as I stumbled my way through the show that I created. So, <laughs> nice job there, Dakota, as we're about to go back to green here. 
Here we go. Bayless car's about to dive. We're all, we're working off of turn number four. When the pace car goes, you gotta watch the 88. He'll be set to dive. There he goes. The pace car in the 88 is away. He gets a huge jump on the 07 13. He gets a pretty good start. He's gonna stay with the 07. Looks like he's already looking for the position as uh, 13 on a roll. Yeah, and it looks like the 36 truck of Jacob Fife uh, falling asleep a little bit on that uh, restart, and he's falling back all the way to sixth position by the looks of it. Uh, he didn't seem too strong on that start, but uh, we know he's got the uh, got the horsepower there, so he's going to make his way up to the front, I'm sure. As the 07 dives to the inside of the 13 truck and tries to take away that second position and set his sight on the lead. And yeah, 13 gives it up. John, it looks like he wants to get back in line. He can't. The 74 is there. 74 looks to the inside. It's Michael Guest. 13 began a huge run on the outside lane. He's not giving it up to the 07. Uh, either way, he wants to fight for the position. Uh, it looks like if he can get line and ride, he will. But he would rather be outside. Uh, he knows that's the place to be. Is the 74 is looking to make the pass on the 13. 13 gets really sideways. It's going to let the, the 74 go. Uh, make up quite a bit of momentum here. Quite a bit of position-wise as uh, 13 going to stay with him, but he falls back just a little bit more, it seems like, off the turn number four. Yeah, one thing I'm going to be watching for as, we, uh, as the laps wind down here, Dakota, is the fact that a lot of these guys have looked like they want to make that dive to make it three wide, but they've decided to not do it because it's not, just not that time of the race. But these guys, looks like they, they've got the, the line and the ability to do it. They're just deciding not to. So I'm guessing once we get to under 10 uh, laps to go that we're going to see some people making some dives to make it three wide. And if you hit that apron, well, things could get a little bit ugly in the last uh, few laps of this race if they make that move, I'd imagine. You would be correct, uh, as uh, we're still side-by-side -side for the third position. Meanwhile, uh, in front of them, the 07 tries to run on the 88. And behind them, the guy that you said was sleeping on the restart, that's Jacob Five. He's up to fifth with Jeff Barger right behind him. They had just exchanged positions. 31 nearly got the outside wall just a few laps ago. Yeah, and one truck to mention here as well is the 04 of Ryan Wells, who was involved in one of those earlier incidents. And... Uh, is, uh, managed to get the wave around at uh, the Lucky Dog as well on one of the previous cautions. He's made his way back up to seven position. My ability to not get my words out is contagious. <laughs> the 04 heavy damage there. Yeah, well, he had, he had uh, gotten involved in one of those earlier incidents and had gotten uh, his truck all banged up, but uh, the crew at least got it going back on the track enough for him to, to not uh, fall back from this pack here as we've got... Uh, the, uh, the 88 is now falling back to third position there with uh, the 07 still leading the way. And right behind him, 36 looks to the inside of 13. That is Jacob Pipe underneath Matthew Wright. Oh, as they almost make contact in, to, in front of them. Michael Guest goes to the inside of Andrew Fayash, the third. Andrew Fayash holding on strong on the outside lane, but he loses a little bit of time as he wiggles off of turn number two. That lets the 74 make up some time. 13, however, gaining time on the outside lane. Outside lane looks like it's rolling pretty much as a lot of cars have moved up there to follow the 07. Yeah, and that's exactly what Matthew Wright told us in that 13 truck. Whoa, the 36 truck hits the apron and gets a little bit loose, but manages to keep it going in the right direction, but he is going to lose some positions. Yeah, he will. As, uh, Oh, 88 was right on the bumper of the 07. He has to fall off. Looks like he got a lot of sideways. Here comes the 31 now. Remember, the 31 has gotten the wall a few times, but he's still there. 13 comes up right in front of the 88, and uh, he moves to the outside lane. Now we get the 36 coming up on the 88 now. Those two are teammates and uh, are first and second in the points there. So it'll be interesting to see if they give each other any room. Does not look like that is the case. The 36 wants that position, and he almost went into the grass to get it. And the pass in the grass, and that's what it's going to be, because he's going to put himself in position to make the pass as the 07 up front, losing time to the 74. 74 making a valiant run, uh, but the 07 not letting, letting him go. Remember the 13 seg, the outside lane is the place to be. That was Matthew Wright on the radio uh, just, you know, a little while ago during the caution. He's up there, and he's sitting in the fourth position. Yeah, and these guys, uh, one thing that I'm also watching is these guys are going through the corners. Is uh, They're playing a, a deadly game of chess here as they are not giving each other room going through those corners and trying to squeeze each other as tight as they possibly can here so that they can't get the line that they want to get through there. So it's as it's much of a mental game as, uh, as uh, you know, just holding the line as well as we have another dive to the inside for the lead with the 07 trying to take it away from the 74. 07 crossover shut down the very inside lane. Is, uh, he's going to push up the track in big checkup. Uh, he nearly took out the 74. 74 saves it. Big stack up. Everybody 
Everybody know where to go. 31 looks like he'll be the big beneficiary out of it. He is now to the bumper of the 74 around the 07. 13 stuck back on the outside lane. He's falling back to the outside of the 8. He's going back even further. A lot of cars. Not the beneficiary out of this though. So it looks like the 88 uh, might have fallen back quite a few spots, even more than he would have liked to have. Yeah, definitely, but that was some impressive driving by all these guys because, I mean, when that stacked up there, everybody had to get be uh, reacting really, really quickly there or else that would have caused a massive uh, crash and uh, taken out all of our top runners. But uh, great job by these guys to keep everything going in the right direction. Definitely here is the 07 looks to get back past the 31 of Jeff Barger. There's the 36 of Jacob Fife, who is five points back from the points leader. Uh, Michael Dewell, and it looks like 26 on the bumper of that 07. He's pushing him almost as uh, 07 looking to clear the 31. It gets close, but he's not quite there. So the 74 really enjoying all of the side by side action behind him. It's letting him get just a little bit of a gap here between him and them. Yeah, well, that gap is closing awfully quickly as the 07 got some great momentum coming through that corner there and uh, closed that gap down a little bit, but he's still got the 31 on the outside there, so it's not like he's going to get away, I don't think. And this is some great racing we're seeing here, Dakota. That it is. This uh, 74, I see him moving around quite a bit, trying to give draft to the 31. I don't think he wants to see that 07 get in his, get in his rear view mirror. If he can keep that 31 uh, strong, Maybe the 31 can hold up the 07, that's what the 74 wants, as we come with just 26, or actually just about 20, 22 laps to go here. Yeah, one thing to note here of all these front runners here is that out of the 12 races that, have, that they have had this season there, they have had eight different drivers winning races with uh, Michael Duell, Jacob Fife, and Matthew Wright uh, being the only trucks that have won multiple races. And uh, hmm, let's see, all those, tr those three trucks are sitting up here in this lead pack and fighting for this win. And it looks like the 07 clears the 30, uh, 31, 31 falling back now to the 36, 36 on the inside, that's Jacob Five looking for, for the E position, 07 is already caught in the leader, uh, it, I said caught, yeah, that, uh, that's yeah, not he, right. Yeah, he's but, caught in that leader all over him. <laughs> that's not right, but, uh, he's to the bumper of the 74, 74, not going to give him any room though, 36, losing some time. Uh, so it looks like he just shot out the racetrack. He is around the 31, though, and they are side-by-side side with the 13 and 8 car behind them. Oh, we, we have one in the grass. It looks like the 33 truck, I think. Trying to get the old binoculars out here. And it looks like the 33 truck of Jeff Chandler went into the grass and lost some positions, but uh, managed to keep it going straight, so a great uh, job of getting behind the wheel on that truck right there. Definitely. The 07 tries to make the pass on the 74. They nearly made contact in 1 and 2. The 07 has cotton the 74, and he's looking to get around them here. Well, like I mentioned there earlier, like these guys are given less and less room here. I mean, they're all being respectful to each other, but, uh, you know, they're going to make each other fight for each and every position because they get so close going through that corner. One little slip, and uh, those guys are done for. So this is some fantastic side-by-side -side racing. Less than 20 to go, now it's the time to get it. I think we see that 13 looking to the outside lane of 36. That is Fife on the inside, right on the outside. 74 of Michael Gus. Guess is hanging on strong. 07, Andrew Payash the third. Inside lane, he is the uh, was the second place car across the line. He's going back and forth for the lead. Uh, looks like the 07 just cannot get off the corner because he, he has the lift. You see him right there in the center of the corner. He's the list, so he doesn't run over the 74. 74 doesn't. There's a lot of momentum. He makes up just a little bit of time, but it's enough to keep him up there. Yeah, and that's part of the game that he's playing. The 74 is making sure he doesn't have that room, and he has to play with that throttle through the corner there. So he's basically saying, hey, I'm out here, and I'm going to take up all the space that I can. So if you're going to have to pass me, you're going to have to do it while you're a little bit off the throttle. And uh, that's part of the game of, uh, of racing around this big track. Yeah, the 74, man, he got so close. I mean, they almost made contact if they didn't last time. There they are again, so close. Uh, the 74 and, and the 07 not making any contact whatsoever, it, it appears. And uh, racing super, super hard, and it, it's working. Yeah. And uh, one thing as well is the 88 truck, Michael Duell, he had uh, fallen back from this lead group there a little bit, but uh, he is now gaining back up, and he is uh, sniffing the, uh, I don't want to use the word draft because we're not on super speedway, but uh, that's basically what's happening, and he's uh, catching up to the back of the eight. Oh, as we have some close, close, close racing between the 31 and the 13 the, uh, for the uh, fourth and fifth position there with the eight truck right behind him. Uh, there's one way to put the racing action we're seeing here. We're at Charlotte Super Speedway. 
<laughs> that's what it sort of seems like, isn't it? I mean, this is the the uh, the draft pack here as we're going through here, and they're not letting me, everybody uh, anybody go, and everybody's uh, just inches from each other here. This is amazing. And 36 got to the bumper of the 07. The 74 has fallen back. He is no longer on the outside of the 07. That's why the 07 to make up some good time. 74 back to the bumper. He goes to the outside. He's going to be in the outside of the 07. Andrew Fayash, the third. So the 74, Michael Guest, not giving up yet. 36, nowhere to go but to the bumper of the 07. Then he has to back off. 13 of Matthew Wright is hanging on strong to the bumper of the 74. And how about Michael Duell? He's hanging on to the outside lane, the very outside lane. Last car on the outside lane uh, of those three on the outside. Uh, and he's moved up quite a few spots now uh, after falling back. 31 shoots up the racetrack just a little bit. He has to check up. Eight has to check up for him. As we just about go, so we do go three wide almost. Uh, I, we got three wide for the oh, race lead. There we go. Oh, and Jacob just backs off at the last minute there, making the 07 think that he's going to make that move, but he just backs off at the last minute there, trying to get in his head probably saying, that, hey, you know, if you're going to leave me any space down there, I'm going to make that move. Well, see, it might have been that, or he was, uh, he was thinking, well, I probably can't make this corner. As much as I'd like to shove it down the three wide, I would probably push up the racetrack. As he does on the 13, 13 gets shoved up way up the racetrack, gets next to the wall, 88, goes to three wide through the middle, takes the spot, 88, now to the outside of the 36, those two the points leaders, uh, five points between the two. And, uh, you know, wow. Yeah, I don't think I saw any contact between the, uh, the 36 and the 13. Looked like he washed up just a little bit, and the 13 reacted, and, uh, just to stay out of his way there, so if he hadn't reacted, there would have been contact, but I don't think there actually was as they went through that corner, but it was ever so close. Meanwhile, up front, the 74 will make contact with the 07 once again. We're still side by side for the lead, side by side for third, and the 31 by himself, by his lonesome, not very, uh, not for very long, because here comes the 8 to try to make it side by side for, I do believe, the fifth position. Yeah, and at the uh, tail end of this group here is the 33 of Jeff Chandler. As uh, we mentioned earlier, he went through the grass, and uh, he was also uh, one of those trucks that was way, way, way back at the beginning of this race. But here he is uh, competing for the potential lead here at the end of this lead pack. Ten laps remaining. We cross the start finish line. Up front, 74 has the momentum heading into turn number three. And he loses it going through the corner, and here he, here he goes to make up some time as they get really close. 88 going to make up the spot on 36. 36 pushed up the racetrack, had to check up. Uh, here we go, three wide back here for position, as uh, I do believe that is the 31 underneath the 36. Eight on the outside. The 36 shoves the car down there, just barely clear, it looked like, but he takes him the spot. Meanwhile, up front, we're still side by side. Wow, we're now three wide with the 31, the 13, and the 8 truck down the back stretch here. As they head in the corner, still three wide, but looks like the 13 is going to squeeze out of the back of that, and the 8 drops back a little bit as well, so everybody makes it to that corner well as they are still side by side. I think that's how this race is going to end, Dakota, with those two trucks side by side, unless uh, somebody slips up and somebody can get in there like that 88 truck who is just sniffing all over the tail of the 74. Or if they make contact like they almost just did, if they did, no 7, 74, so close. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't be surprised if the 88 shoves it in there three wide. I mean, he's going to try to win the race. Uh, he has the points leader, so he's got to be careful not to get involved in the wreck. But uh, it would not surprise me if he does go three wide. He's to the bumper of the 07. He's moving around trying to figure out which lane is moving the most and where. As the, you see him now go to the outside of the 74. He's going to make this mine quick because here comes the 36 in a hurry. Yeah, definitely. And uh, with 15 cars still on the lead lap here, even if you make a move and you slide off, you know, and you uh, you wreck your truck out, you're going to lose a lot of positions here. So he's still going to have that uh, that little bit of the mental game in in play as well as he slides behind the 74 on that outside line, and tries to make that line work. As the 74 is still trying to get around that 07. Still side by side is uh, it looks like the outside lane making up a little bit of time here. Well, Matthew Wright in the 13 truck said that the outside lane was going to be where you wanted to be at the end of this race, but I'm not seeing them being able to make that move stick. It looks like the 07, with uh, being given just enough room to make it through those corners, is able to, to hold on, but the 74 just has a little bit of an edge as they go into the corner, but the, 7, the 07 manages to squeeze it out oh, and almost makes contact with the 74 as they exit the corner. It appears we are now having video, te uh, video technical difficulties, but we will stay with it uh, with the audio action here as we are still side by side for the race lead 88 on the outside lane stick behind the 74 he almost makes contact with the seven with the 74 uh, 88 shoots down to the inside gonna go three wide down the bot 
down the back straight away. Three wide. 07 in the middle, 88 on the bottom. 74 on the very, very top lane. They get plenty of room. Uh, 07, 88 kind of get pinched a little bit. 74 falls back to the outside lane. He falls back to second in that position, making it two wide once again. 07 will take over the lead, and it looks like he stays to the outside currently. Yeah, this is, I mean, I've got to say that this is about the most, the closest, most respectful racing I think I've ever seen. These guys are showing each other respect on that track and giving each other just enough room. But man, oh man, they are, they are fighting for this tooth and nail. It looks like 07 leading the outside lane. He's not really using a whole lot of the bottom. Now he comes down the bottom. 74 going to be side by side with the 88. 74 has the momentum in the track position. They all make contact coming off. They're so close. 88 had pushed way up the racetrack. He's using every bit he can get from the 74. And oh, they make contact. 88 gets shot down the track a little bit, but he saves it uh, and maintains. He shoves up the racetrack, has to back off the throttle big time. Just four laps remaining as uh, they check up behind him. 36, and that goes to the inside. 13 got all kinds of sideways trying to check up. And the 31 of Jeff Archer follows. Wow, this is amazing as we have the teammates, 36 and 88, side by side. The 07 is just checking out slightly on the field here, uh, right ahead of the 74 as the 88 and the 36 fight it out, so leaving the 74 to kind of chase down the 07 and hopefully uh, get that lead back. But I don't know, the 07 has enough of a lead here. I think he might be able to make this stick. And the 88, or uh, the... Oh, oh, 88 gets turned around outside wall. He goes for a ride. That should bring out the caution. Race is over. 07, Andrew Vash, the third, will win the race. 88, Michael Duell will be the cause of the caution. Points leader goes from third to the rear. Wow, and that was just what we were, what we were saying that you know, he had to be worried about happening. And uh, man, oh man, oh man, like he get turned, like, and that was on his teammate. So I'm wondering how, uh, what, the, uh, what the condition in the hauler is going to be after uh, the end of the race there. So we're going to talk it out as uh, he wrecked off the uh, front of his teammate. Remember, they got to be thinking points here. Guess is going to walk away with the points lead if they end the way they are currently running. None yeah, other... exactly. Yeah, none other than the 36 of Jacob Fife, uh, as he is currently sitting in that third position. As we uh, as see the 88 comes back up to the field, I don't I don't know whether he's trying to say hi to somebody. Uh, and when I say hi, I don't <laughs> mean hi, but uh, I don't know. But uh, it looks like he's going to fall back a few spots. Now he goes back to his respective position. We come across the start finish line to take the white flag. Going to be lap 125 at Charlotte Motor Speedway with the Integrity uh, Integrity Racing League Sim Racing done right. I'll eventually get it right. I've had all kinds of problems tonight. Hey, what though? <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, I mean, you know, talking words. I mean, they can be a challenge at time, especially as we're trying to, you know, talk through this exciting uh, race that we've had. I mean, it's, it's, I've been stumbling over myself as we've been trying to get all the action and capture it all as we went through here. But uh, this has been an awesome race. And like I said, this was uh, some of the most uh, tight side by side yet respectful racing that I've seen. And I'm, I know that obviously Jacob, uh, you know, didn't make he didn't mean to make contact that 88 truck, but uh, that's unfortunate for Michael Duell as he's going to finish a little bit far back in that field there. But uh, he is running, so he uh, didn't get taken out completely. But uh, I think he's going to finish somewhere around the 11th position or so, which is going to hurt him in the points. That it will. That will actually give up the points lead to Jacob Five, I do believe. But uh, working through the back straight away, almost to turn number three for the final time. Andrew Fash the third, 07 car. He looks like he will win the race. We're going to try to get him on the radio here for our post-race interview. And uh, I believe we almost have it set up. And we've got him. Andrew Fayash the third on the radio. Just about to come across the start-finish line. He he's actually in turns three and four. Just about to come off of turn number four. Oh, seven car, you are the winner. Uh, thanks, guys. That was, uh, was one heck of a battle there. Yeah, with uh, Michael Guest and making a three wide that actually helped me out more than it hurt me so it was fun I mean that was some of the, the tightest racing some of the best racing I think we've seen in a long time anywhere especially at Charlotte uh, you guys know how to do it I mean this is like a draft lock we call it Charlotte Super Speedway at one point how was that for you from a driver's point of view and how did you manage to sneak through all the carnage and, and all this to be up front at the end oh the, the whole draft lock thing and the whole 
I don't know, kind of pack racing mentality. I, I don't like that stuff at all. It's frustrating from the driver's seat because, I mean, you take the lead, you get a little bit of a gap on them, and you're like, all right, I'm going to get some breathing room. And then all of a sudden, they're right back on top of you. Um, I'm more of a short track guy than anything. I like I like the tougher tracks where, you know, you get a little bit of room to work with, a little beating and banging going on. But this was, that was intense. Uh I thought for sure we were going to wreck a few different times because, you know, he was pinching me as much as he could without wrecking us, and it was it was a little scary and hairy, but it was fun. How do you, when you say you get a little frustrated from the driver's point of view, how do you handle that frustration when you take the lead and then a lap later somebody that you just passed comes back by you uh, and then you've got to go back by them? I mean, that can be very irritating, and how do you handle that? All right, you just got to take it one lap at a time. You can't really... Uh... You know, it, it is frustrating, especially if you get freight trained a little bit, but, um, you know, you just got to get back at it, go digging again. You know, it's just, you can't really, you can't let it get to you too much, otherwise you'll end up wrecking yourself. Yeah, and, you know, uh, Trevor here there, Andrew, and uh, one thing that we mentioned, that, you know, during the broadcast here is the fact that, you know, while you guys were pinching each other and you guys were doing all you could to take as much uh, racetrack as you could going through there, like, we saw a lot of respect out there. I mean, there should have been a few wrecks that just didn't happen because you guys were just racing each other with a lot of respect. That uh, that must have, uh, it must have been at least uh, good to know that you could trust the guy that was on the outside or the inside of you out there. Yeah, it's definitely helpful when you know the guys around you. I mean, I'm I'm somewhat new to this league, but I do I used to race with Duel back, you know, since the NR 2003 days and Michael Guest. I raced with him a bunch before, so you know I knew they'd they'd race me as as hard as possible, but as cleanly as possible. And I mean, I I made a mistake that one time. I got underneath him when I when I crossed him over on the back stretch, and uh, the car or the truck pushed on me real bad going into three and. Um, I thought for sure I was going to end up wrecking somebody the way that went, but everybody gave each other room, and, you know, it, it just shows the quality of this league and all the people in it, you know, um, and all the respect between everybody. All right. Yeah, Oh, sorry about that, Dakota. It's, say, uh, but uh, definitely congratulations on that win there, Andrew. Uh, I see that you got uh, Valve and Steam on the truck there, assuming that my trading paints is updated properly. Uh, anybody you want to thank, and uh, who makes it happen for you? Well, since I don't get interviewed for the for the pro race as much because I'm terrible, <laughs> um, I'd like to thank all my teammates at Galaxy Motorsports for all the work they do for me over there uh, every week with setups and everything. And um, you know, I just want to. It's it's been a tough few weeks. I don't know. I don't know whether you guys follow that series or follow you know any, any of the stuff going on. But I lost my father about two weeks ago now, and and uh, you know I know he would want me to keep racing, which is why I'm still here you know digging but uh i don't know it's it's tough but you know like i said about taking it one lap at a time you got to you kind of got to do that with life and take it one day at a time too all right andrew thank you uh, for taking the time to talk to us here and uh, fantastic win that uh, was probably one of the most interesting backwards victory laps as uh, it could be put uh that i've seen but i'm uh, going to let you go celebrate here just a little bit all right, thank you. I've been waiting to do that for a while on a broadcast or something. <laughs> uh, thank you guys for broadcasting this. Do appreciate it. All right, thank you. And uh, there is Andrew Fash III. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, pull up Michael Guest, who was able to bring home a second-place finish uh, in a very well-deserved, well-fought battle it was for that second position. And, uh, Michael, man, what a race for you. Yeah, uh, I had a... Pretty bad in it at the beginning of the race. I got black flag for it, and I had to go a lap down from that. But got the lap back, and we had some troubles earlier in the race as well. And we just fought back and got up there side by side for a while, but couldn't pull it off. Yeah, well, we were watching it. Uh, you know, you had those uh, issues at the beginning there, Mike, like we mentioned, uh, like you mentioned there. And uh, to come back and, you know, and then be fighting for the lead. I mean, those last bunch of laps there where you were uh, fighting side by side with the 07 truck. I mean, that uh, that had to be really intense in the uh, in behind the wheel there. Yeah, I just tried to pinch him as hard as I could the whole time. Uh, the high line doesn't work. Well, I mean. 
Yeah, well, I mean, like you said, you, you like we were mentioned that, and uh, Jacob mentioned, or uh, uh, not Jacob, <laughs> Andrew mentioned that as well. That you guys were just pinching each other. I mean, it's amazing that you guys are able to to go through those corners just inches apart and uh, and not make any contact. That was uh, some superb driving there for sure. Yeah, we 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 hit each other a couple times, but it was great racing overall. Well, definitely congratulations on a uh, on a second place. Uh, strong, I mean, like you said, had to come from the back of the field, uh, you know, from the front to the back and uh, back towards the front there. So definitely congratulations on a second place finish. Uh, anybody you want to uh, thank on the team? There are any sponsors? Uh, I'd like to thank DJ Lyon for letting me run Racer Boost on his truck and everybody that helps me out with everything. Well, congratulations again, Michael. That was our second place uh, finisher, the 74 truck of Michael Guest. Uh, uh, Dakota, do you get anybody else on the radio there? I do believe we do. We have the third place finisher, and that was Jacob Fife. And Jacob, man, I do believe you're going to take over the points lead. Uh, all, all the talk that was on the last uh, incident, the thing that brought out the last caution, I do believe you and uh, your buddy there, Michael Duell, uh made a little bit of contact. Yeah, that was unfortunate. You know, it's hard racing there at the end. I think we were battling uh, for third, uh, third and fourth there. Uh, we had, it's been a great race so far. Um, and you're just going into one there. I, I started to push uh, up the track a little bit. I thought I still had room, but I think either a net code happened or something, or I just you know just barely got into him just enough to send him around. I hate to do that. Uh, definitely didn't mean to do that, but uh, that happens sometimes. And I know you run the league here, and man, how do you, as a, as a league owner, how do you stand? I mean, when you're sitting there watching everybody, and you're even in this action, everybody racing so well, and it was so much racing everywhere on the racetrack, especially up there for the top several positions. I mean, what was that like for you? Uh, as a driver, um, I'm glad to be in it. It's tons of fun. Uh, as a as a league owner, that's what I love to see. I love to see people who, you know, are racing hard, and there's definitely tons of hard racing, but overall are racing cleanly. That's what we preach here. You know, every driver's meeting I get into, that's what I kind of preach to them, to drive clean, because uh, that's how we're going to have a great league. And we do have a great league. Uh, we get strong turnouts each week, and, you know, we have a, we have a great bunch of guys, I have to admit. Um, you know, and we've positioned ourselves well in the past year or so to be able to have a variety of people who come into our league and you know who get along with each other for the most part and are just able to race well together and have great races like this and this was definitely a top-notch race tonight all right man and uh, man I, I do believe you took over the points lead how does that change the way you walk in the next week are you more conservative or still just going for the win no you got to go for wins uh wins equal bonus points uh towards our chase so um you know the guys who are behind me aren't going to let up you know, we have some very talented people who are racing in our league. Uh, when you talk about the likes of Michael Guest, of Andrew Fias, who won tonight, uh, you know, they're pros, and um, or some of them are. And, you know, Busa races with us. He's, he's no slouch by any means. Um, so when you have people like that, you can't let up, you know. Otherwise, you're not going to be in the points lead for very long. Uh, Duel's another example of that. He's been leading the points the past five or six weeks now, I believe. Uh, so you got to keep going. you got to keep making passes you got to keep staying in the front all right well michael here's your chance or jacob uh, i don't know what i'm thinking but uh, jacob here's your chance to any shout outs you may have yeah man uh first of all i want to thank etv obviously for coming out tonight and uh broadcasting our race uh i want to thank my teammate duel uh even though i think i put him in the wall the last couple laps there um i want to thank everybody who's a part of this league who comes out and supports it uh those are the guys who really make it happen um, and make our league success successful. Uh, I want to thank Papa Fife, uh, who raced tonight. He didn't have the greatest of nights, but uh, it's fun to race. You know, this is a very, um, you know, family-like atmosphere to a certain extent. We have fun. We make jokes and all that good stuff, but we, we do get along well, and that's what makes the league great. So I want to thank everybody who comes out and supports us. All right, thank you, Jacob, uh, for putting on a league, and thank you uh, for joining us here for a post-race interview. Now, I do believe that that's all we have here, Trevor. 
Yeah, I just wanted to do a quick, just quick mention there that the uh, main sponsor of the, the Integrity Racing League here is Pro Powder and Paint Incorporated. Superior finishes for business and consumer, and you can check them out at propowderandpaint.com. I had forgot to mention that during uh, as we went through the uh, the racing was too intense there, Dakota. That I just completely forgot to uh, to get uh, all uh, plug in commercial like. So I just wanted to make sure I did not forget to mention that at the end of this broadcast. But uh, I want to thank you for jumping up here in the booth and taking over Chad's spot. Uh, you know, fabulous job! I'm uh, I was sitting here taking notes as to uh, how to be a better broadcaster, Dakota. So I I thank you for that. And uh, I, it was an exciting watch to race, uh, despite a little bit of technical issues here and there. But uh, I'm glad that we both. Uh, were there for that tonight because it uh, was a lot of fun it definitely was thank you and i hope to be back maybe next week or in the coming weeks uh rejoin you guys uh maybe even next week i uh, let's see what's going on but uh anyways for all of us here at etv live i'm dakota herman joined by trevor cameron and laura loss and jd webb was hanging around a little earlier we're gonna go ahead and uh you know take uh, we're gonna go ahead and cut off with the air we'll see you guys uh, next week